Hi folks, uh, how are you all doing? Um, you're welcome along uh, to another examiner uh, hurling show. Um, difference being tonight, we're on a Sunday night. Uh, the sun is shining out the Outside us here is a stream of traffic going back from where I am, back from Kilkee, back to Limerick. I don't know they're not supposed to come outside the county, TJ, but we suppose we a bit of uh, we let you off, I suppose, in the current situation. Uh, very dark behind you there as well, TJ, because obviously he's roast and hot sunshine coming in over the Galties there on top of him, so we have to adjust a bit for that. Um, sunshine, Mark, you can't call into the loser. I know that's the way you'll be thinking now. Hopefully. <laughs> Few weeks, TJ. We'll have the old umbrellas out, and uh, we'll be nabbing a few of them anyway. Come back. Uh, delighted, Marcus here as well. But delighted to be joined uh, this week. Although he's just after reminding me that he doesn't have a great record when he's on this show. But delighted to to welcome back uh, All Ireland referee from last winter. The referee, the most amazing All Ireland final. I suppose that myself and himself were privileged to be inside the ground that day. Uh, also referee in seventeen. Obviously, Fergal Hargan. Fergal, how are you? <clears throat> Thanks, Anthony. Yeah, uh, it's great to be heading down the road again to the first league match since the last time I was with you, um, March 11th last year. We we no league match since, so it's hard to imagine 50, 14 or 15 months later to be our next league match. Uh, we never thought that that Monday before Cheltenham of last year. But listen, it's it what it's going to be a magnificent league. We hope the conditions are going to be the best league conditions played for many a year. And let's let's let let's get let the games begin. Yeah, Fergal, if there's any sign of a new strain or anything tomorrow or Tuesday, we won't be able to have you on the show anymore because <laughs> it's too much of a coincidence. <laughs> How we doing, lads? How we doing, Mark? Very good, yeah, I don't know. Great format and, and uh, delighted that Fergal is on with us this evening. Um, there's a lot of water under the bridge since the last time we spoke. I suppose the, uh, the Queen is after coming in again, the darling of the podcast, so... Uh, but you were on this time, of course. See the smile on your face, like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. Yourself and TJ, you have to send in a few quid down my way, yeah? Nah, no <laughs> chance, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, if ever I was hoping there'd be a pub allowed to be open, it was last Sunday evening, like, <laughs> and the ball of money from the coin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, she, did it, she did it well, no, to be fair. And um, she got a great ride from Joy Sheldon, which is, and uh, that was a Champions weekend, so it was 15 grand for the first prize, which is, Away fifty percent more than it normally is, but it's it's as great as she that for Ken Buds and, and everybody involved. There's only a few here watching it now, and the kids were watching this marvelous match. It was roaring at the television as I was. I suppose about fifty hours to run, like. But uh, no, she's mighty now. In fairness, she only got three pounds, and uh, the handicapper there on the top right hand corner would probably tell you whether she has a chance of winning again. Well, what's the call, teacher? Well, in Mark's case, right, so Dilla, she's got three handicap marks, right? So she handicapped in the all weather in Dundalk, right? She handicapped over hurdles, right? So she's won in Dundalk and she's won over hurdles. But believe it or not, Dilla, her lowest handicap mark, right, is on the turf in the flat. So she could run on grass between here and maybe Galway, I'd say, on a nice dry day with good ground. She's rated 53, Mark. I would say over a mile and a half, get on. She'd be a certain DJ. Would you go to Galway <laughs> <laughs> with her? Ah, uh, she so you you uh, you'd have to be thinking that way now, Mark. She's got two nice races, one, but I said to on on a nice track, uh off fifty three on the dirt, mile and a half, good pile it up. I'd be happy to plow in. Yeah, she's a nice boys. ladies race there in the car later on in the year, the, the ladies race over a mile and a half. She might appreciate a good long straight. I think Galway track is fairly is uh well, it's a bit like Tremor as well, where she won a short head, but uh correct. Yeah, I'll, um I better pass that through the stewards there and see when we get the nod. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play, it's nice have, nice to have a horse with all those options anyway, and a good few of our and of course <laughs> and Dela Dela, just before we go away from it now, since the last time we spoke, your old buddy Josie Mourinho. And uh, got the P45 and you lost the Carabao Cup. So, come here. You're not getting off that light tonight. Jeez, I'm only after an hour after the Carabao Cup. Like, will you give me a break? Will you like, you know, jeez. 
But just go to show one you nil. Know, a manager is a manager, whatever. Like and would like likes a Sizoko and and these fellas like Eric Dyer. Just not good enough, like. <laughs> if you're going to keep playing them fellas, no matter who's in charge, the same mistakes and occur. But anyway, we I, keep it hurling as much as we can. <laughs> who who's getting the job of Spurs there? I don't know. I don't know. If they could tempt your man away from Leicester to be huge, which you'd be saying, why would you be leaving Leicester to go to Spurs at the moment? Well, sure, mm. I don't know. I don't know. Rogers. Roy Keane is available, yeah. Dello. I wouldn't put him over Katie Barry. Just <laughs> 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 like the rugby now, there'd be no more mentions of that man on this show. <laughs> I suppose, Fergal, the main reason I, I reached out to you myself there was uh, just a month ago now, our first show of the year. We went rabbiting on about rules and, and regulations and and the new the new trial uh, rules for a year. But it's not, not no good calling them trial because you could win or lose the All Ireland final over one of these rules. So they're there as far as we know anyway for the year. And I suppose your good buddy Johnny Ryan was first on to me anyway. You haven't a clue what you're talking about with those rules. So I said we better address it. No offense now, Johnny, but we said we'd go for Fergal if he was available. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we were. I listened back to it actually this morning, Fergus. I suppose we were rabbit on a bit about, you know, a lad bearing down on goal and he anywhere inside the 21. It is a straight yellow uh, black card and he's off and and, uh, and it's a penalty. Weren't we, TJ? We were sort of. We, you, you, you did very bad for it, TJ. You, you actually said it would be a, a recipe for disaster, the whole thing. So it's well, just I think interesting. I, I, We're the best ref in the country, TJ. So. We do, yeah, we get do his, in fairness, we get, we get, get his take on it. But you, you were very strong that day, TJ, you thought it was well, like, what cynical, I, I, what's I, not cynical. <clears throat> First of all, I, Fergal, I have made peace with all referees all around the country, so we're all on great terms. <laughs> just so you know, right? And <laughs> second, secondly, I thought you made a super job. That's the first law, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you made a super job, yeah, in final last year. Fergal, my, my issues here are around. What is a clear and obvious goal score chance? And is that going to make life difficult for you guys in the spur of the moment? Like, it is difficult, like, with a good ball, a good pass, bad pass, like, can make the difference. So, we be arguing about was there a goal on or was there not a goal on? That's kind of where I was coming from, really. Yeah, well, I suppose there's a few things, I suppose, that you need to address. Well, first of all, there's, there's no black card, okay? So there'll be no card. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's going to be a yellow card, and the referee will will make a will go for a penalty, the the usual um, penalty signal, and he'll be pointed to the line. So there's no extra card coming in. There's no black book or no black card. So it's just a yellow card, and the player will, will the the referee will tell the player that you're now in a sim bin for ten minutes. So there won't be any extra card. That's very important. That was said the last night about a black card. There's no black card, okay? Um, and the clear and obvious score scoring chance is not in the ruling either. Okay, the ruling is very is very clear. Um, uh, you know, it's it's in uh, it's it's just a, a goal scoring opportunity. It's not clear, and it's it's the, the I suppose the big thing about it is it's only the re, it's only the referee that's on duty on the day can call whether it's a sin bin and a penalty or not. So it's completely up to him. Um, which and you're right. Will that cause? Will that call? Will that cause confusion for different referees on different days? Yes, the answer will be it will be for a few weeks in the national league, because this is a year like no other year in the fact that most of the referees on the eighth of May, 9th of May, will have no match refereed since November last year, which is six months. We have no national league. We have no Harty Cup. We have no Fitzgibbon Cups. We have no even inter county challenge matches. Now we had a five or six challenge matches done. Heading into the National League, okay? So no referee. I, I refereed the Ireland on the 13th of December. I haven't put a whistle to my mouth since. So my first appointment, whether it's on the line or refereeing, the 8th or 9th of May, will be the first game I've, I've officiated that since the All-Ireland final under the new rules. So that's going to that's going to bring its own challenges, obviously. And um, the sin bin obviously brings a, an extra challenge in the fact that we haven't had a chance to sit down, go through a few matches. We'll say if, if it wasn't tried it was tried in the league, we might have a look at it. Um or if it's given cup or something, but it hasn't been. So yeah, TG, you're right to a certain extent. It's going to be it's going to be a challenge. It's something that the referees are going to have to come to terms with quickly in the National League, okay? 
But I think it's very important for listeners <coughs> and the media and managers and players, etc. While the players have had three or four weeks to hone their skills on the field, hurling wise, and have probably trained singly <coughs> since um, since Christmas, the referees have not been able to do that. Okay, we've been able to run around the fields and train on our own, but as regards sharpness, the 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 only thing, the only tool we have in our book is is matches and sharpness, and that that that's going to be an issue. Well, Fergal, to go back just, just one to the um the, the the new rule, right? So, are you saying that it is kind of the referee's discretion really whether the goal scoring chance is there or not? And is that the only difference between a normal yard and let's say the same bin and the penalty? So it's only if there's a goal on. It's it's in the opinion of the of the match referee on the day if the goal if he thinks it was a goal scoring opportunity. And it must be inside the 20 meter line and in the semicircle. Okay, he has to take a few things into consideration. How many defenders are between him and the goal line? Could someone else come across and block him? But these are all a matter of opinion, and they're only opinion of, of Anders in charge on the day, nobody else. Uh, it's, it's interesting there. <clears throat> so the semicircle is included because we, we had a long debate about. A cynical free being awarded, we say, out by the sideline, Fergal. So just yeah. so like the semi circle is definitely included in your opinion. So just can we kind of clarify, we say, out by the sidelines and stuff like that. If there was a cynical free, you no, know, I suppose most you were very strong in this that, there, that it wouldn't be a goal scoring opportunity if it was out by the sidelines. So, so Fergal, what's your opinion? Like, or should there be an extra line? A bit like a bit like soccer now, just to, that a penalty is awarded inside the box, and you know there's a vacant bit of space from the box out to the sideline. Should the GA be looking at something like that, for, to make it easier for the referee? No, I, I think we have enough lines on the field to be honest about it, and um, I don't. I, I, the, the less rules that we bring in, in my opinion, I think the game of hurling is in a very good position in a very good place. Okay, um, obviously last year there was a bit of cynical. Uh, Fouls. There was more, probably more so than other years, but it was that was that because of the time of year we played in as well. You know what I mean? It, it brings around different winter horns. You know what I mean? It maybe it did, maybe it doesn't. To answer your question, um, if a player, if a corner forward gets the ball on the sideline inside the twenty meter line, and he rounds the player, right? Why yeah. will the player pull him down if he doesn't feel it's a goal scoring opportunity? So, in my opinion, that if, if the corner forward is capable of rounding his man at any stage inside the 20-meter line and he can lose his marker, at the level we're operating at, any corner forward, and Anthony has played central back, wing back, and TG played at both ends of the field, Mark, and you played wing back, midfield. You know yourself the caliber of player you're dealing with nowadays. The TG Rees, the Joe Cannings, the Aaron Gillans, all these men are capable of scoring. If they can swing their hurley anywhere inside the 20-meter line, these boys are capable of putting the ball in the back of the net. So the question I'd ask is, if the defender doesn't feel he's under pressure, why would he pull him down inside the 20-meter line? And in my yeah, opinion, I, I, if, <clears throat> if the player is going inside the man and he's pulled down inside that 20-meter line deliberately, in my opinion, it's a penalty and a sin bin. And that's clear, of okay. course. Yeah, that, that, that's very yeah, clear. I, for but what, what, what about the case of Let's say a fullback and cornerback are just really, really tight to his man. He's very tight to us. The corner forward wins the ball. He has it in his hand and he's rounding him. And there's a holding, whatever. And it's 50 50. And you know what goes on now in, in the modern games between making runs and checking runs. My, my, my concern again would be around the area of like, is that cynical? Holding a player is not cynical. It's not a, it's not a sin bin or yellow card. Holding a player is, is a free and a noting only. Now, if he holds him inside in the large parallelogram, it's a penalty, but it's not a sin right. Okay. Okay? It has to be a deliberate pull-down, trip, careless use of the hurley, trip with the leg, arm, or hurley. Okay? That's clear. There's only four or five. I can tell you exactly what it is here if you want to know what it is. You clear it up for everyone that's listening. Yeah, be good. Is, um, <clears throat> if any of the following infractions are committed on an attacking player with a goal-scoring opportunity either inside the 20-meter line or the semi-circle arc, to pull down an opponent, to trip an opponent with the hands, arm, leg, foot, or a hurley, or to use the hurley in a careless manner. That's the rule. That's very clear. Okay? 
there was a couple of instances last year where players committed um, cynical fouls. You can go back. I'm not going to name players. Um, on play. I don't talk about players fouling or, or what they did do. Some players fouled and they were able to foul without giving away a card, yellow or red. Okay? These are clear cut. These are what these are what this is what the new rule was brought in for. And they're very clear for for officials, managers, media, and everyone. It, it is clear cut. It's 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 very clear cut what they're looking for. And TJ, to go back to what you were saying about we say the full back being tight and corner back. Absolutely. That's what a full back job is, to be tight and um yeah, pull the jersey. We all know that goes on. But this is a deliberate pull down when a when a player is bearing down on goals. It's, to me, it's a very, very easy decision to make. I can easily tell you the difference between an accidental trip and a fella button is hurry out to trip him. There's a big, big difference. You have to be able to allow for accidental collisions. It happens in every game. And even 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 if we do allow for that, some fellas will say, Oh, he should have given me a yellow card there. Or and you, you might come on and say, yeah, he was right, it was an accident. Look, that's that's um, that's everyone's opinion. But I, I would always side on the side of caution. I'd only be going for a sin bin and yellow card if it's a definite pull down or any one of them I just read out. Accidental. It's, an accidental trip has to be a free. We know that. It's a free, but it's a free. It's, there's nothing else, nothing else to trip to it. But Fergal, I, I think you mentioned there, the staff there, that... You could give away a penalty in the parallelogram, right, without it being a sin bin. Correct. And if you, and if you give that player a yellow card for that foul, is that not leading to confusion now, Fergal? Because if I'm the punter on the seventy thousand, let's look at you flashing a yellow card. You're giving a penalty, but you're not sending to the sin bin, and that's where that's why I thought this separate card may have been yeah. a difference because. You, you've made a clear distinction that you feel it's not cynical, and now you're putting yourself in a position whereby the referee is making the call, no, that's not cynical, but I am giving a yellow card. Yeah. I think that, like, that does lead to confusion now, Fergal, because you've handed a yellow card and you haven't sinned, but you have given the penalty. So I, I, I understand about, you know, you're not an extra card, but in that one incident, to me, that is going to lead to a lot of confusion. The, the only answer I can give to you on that, Mark, and it's, it, I'm not coming across as being abrupt. No, it's not, not my, it's not my issue or problem if the fella in the stand doesn't know the rules of the game. I would expect, well, you, I would expect, I would expect Anthony Daly, who was on the Sunday game, or TG Ryan, to know the rules of the GEA. I would expect him. That is, everyone should at least know the rules. I'm not expecting 80,000 people in Crow Park to know why I give a free or why I give a yellow card. And nor do I actually want to be able to tell them. It's not my job. My job is to referee the match between the, the white lines in, in Crow Park or Simple Stadium. And that's it. And I'll always explain to the player exactly why he's being carded and what he'd done. If it was, if it was an infraction in, um, I was taught about from a sideline or a linesman, I tell him exactly why the card has been issued. But I, I can't I can't legislate for, for the people in the stand. That, that might know the rules. But I do, I do, I do, I do sympathise with what you're saying about the, the sin bin and the yellow card and the normal penalty. I agree with you. We have actually spoke about that, but it was agreed that no other card would be used. Okay. So, okay. so there, there would have been um, some people feeling that it was maybe maybe bring in the black. Black is in football, at least. People are familiar with it, that we could yeah. determine, you know, distinguish between our normal yellow card because you'll have yellow cards out around the middle of the field now, like a, a dirty pull or something, and, and lads will be saying, he's after getting a yellow, why didn't he gone off? I don't know, that's your, mm. not your job. We're not saying that. Like, But I, I do think that that could have been made a little bit clearer for, in fairness, the people that pay going into turnstiles or to live stream, as we know now, is, is our, our way of doing yeah. it. Well at, the, well, at the time of speaking, Anthony, there's no other card. That's all I can tell you. That We haven't been, we haven't been told there's any other card, only... A sin bin, and that the player will be told is a sin bin, and that's that's as far as it goes. And he'll relay the message to the manager or the sideline official. I'm, I I'll be mic'd up, or whoever's refereeing the game will be mic'd up to the fourth official and linesman, and um, they'll be able to tell him. And Fergal, is, is there, I, I, anyone, it sounds strange. Is, is there a signal for? Is there a signal for the sin? I know it sounds a bit mad, but like you no. can just go go. Is it <laughs> when when you? When you see him walking toward, towards you, TG, you know he's gone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we went back, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 
But the big yeah. thing, I suppose, and we discussed it the last day, Fergal, was, you know, um, and we didn't get a rise, and it's fantastic to have you on, even for a fellow that'll be going on the Sunday game, to clear up a few things in my head. But, <laughs> like, a fella that catches a fella's jersey, though, and doesn't bring him to ground, and he pulls him back, then there's, there cannot be uh, a sin bin, and let's say you can still give the penalty, but you can't sin bin for that, is that correct? Correct, yeah. It's only holding is only a noting. But if he does it again, if he does if he does it a second time, it's yellow. A two noting infractions would be yellow. That's the rule, Anthony. That's that's the rules that we've been handed down. And um I look, there's there's merit in what in what you're I know exactly where you're coming from, but unfortunately the set of rules are as as I as I laid out to you there a few minutes ago, and that's it. You can pull at the jerseys is is is, is 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 not a deliberate it's not in the rules and that's it. And for Fergal, like, is there any? Is there? Uh, go on, Mark. Sorry. sorry. Like, it, it, like Fergal, and I, and I will compliment you on this now, right? Um, you were mic'd up a couple of years ago at Waterford in the All Ireland final, and I was at the game live, and I never noticed the amount of talking and your involvement in the game. I thought it was outstanding, to be honest with it. And we look played in Dickie Murphy's time, whereby you could never kind of follow with Dickie Murphy. And I'd have to say you are something similar as well at the moment. But you are very strict and you're very stern, but 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 not over the top, which I think is fantastic from a referee's point of view with the players. And uh, I just want to compliment you on that. Like I, I I think it's outstanding. Like, but I I can see a massive amount of confusion now already. Even like and you were talking about it, it isn't your concern about the, the paying punter, but there was three of us on the show a fortnight ago, and between the three of us. We were kind of a bit bamboozled ourselves, like, and that's, and I know that's not your either, but I like the amount of work, Fergal, and Derek a referee is, yeah, <laughs> but the amount of knowledge and rules, and even the second yellow card there for cynical play for two holdings of the jersey, but it's sorry, it's not cynical play, sorry, it's grabbing at the jersey, and that's still not a penalty. You know, I think it's a great oh, trip. No, it, 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 it is a penalty, but it's not a sin bin. Yeah. So it is a penalty, not a sin bin. Like the yeah. level the level of detail, Fergal, that you have to know, and we've often spoken to show about taking somebody's jobs off of you in terms of scorekeeping or timekeeping, um, or even the substitutions or the yellow cards and the red cards. Like I mean I it's a great tribute to you and all your referees, I must say. Thanks, Mark. But uh, I the, I'll be honest with you, we don't we don't find um the referee in a chore because look we've we obviously we've a lot of games done and we came through the ranks and look it's just something we, you get so used to it's like Anthony playing a match or TJ or yourself playing a game and you go training three nights a week and you listen to the manager roaring and balling at you whatever you do and it just look you just come accustomed to it and um, look we're used to going back to what you said about the punter and the stand and look I train teams myself and I've been involved in, in tip teams and all them and I know what goes into it and Every, the three V are the same. You've been involved in, at the highest level for many years with brilliant teams, and like I would love for all the punters understand no more than anyone to really understand what we are going through or what we have to do, right? But like in the world we are living in, at refereeing the game has gone so quick, it's gone so intense. Like the hits are massive, right? These boys are better trained probably than any professionals in the world. Let's be honest about it. Like these boys are. You can call them animals, you can call them beasts. I mean that in the best sense of the word. Every one of these boys, they're top, top men, right? And I have enough to be doing, and the referees have enough to be doing, just to make the right split, the se- right decision in that split second moment, right? So anything else that goes on around us in a stadium, whether it is Mark talking about us at half time or the exam on a Monday morning, or, you know, anyone have something to say, or they don't, I'll often go home and listen to someone. I'm on, uh, on something that happened and I'd be saying to myself he hasn't one clue what he's talking about not an iota but like do I go on social media and say what I think no I don't go on social media I don't do social media people can say what they want about me on social media there's plenty of people that will say bad things about me do I worry about it water off a duck's back the very same if Anthony Daly's over a team he gets Fleck and Clare Tease you got it in Limerick you got it when you are playing with Cork do I care no, absolutely not. I kind of did. 
no, I have to say, when I knew the whole country was giving out shit about me, I kind of, I kind of did care. I have to say, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but that's the point I was trying to make. Was that I, was, I, I was saying like I can fully understand the pressure referees are under, and I would be in favour of, and I have been saying that there is aspects here that we could take off the referee, right? Like things like keeping score and maybe the time and stuff, right? That, that, that's where I was coming from. I feel that this is an extra piece onto a referee, like like. Like you know yourself, right? I, I, and me, because I often I always know, right? When you're involved with the team, you look back at the game maybe once or twice, right? And you'd see, like, you'd say, Becky, there was a goal on there, we could have gone for it. And you would have to look back at it a second time in order to see if the goal was on. Like, and I think that this is a pressure on a referee to say, and you know yourself, the attacking team will say, Jeez, the goal was on, whereas the defending team will be the opposite. So it's, it's, it's a tight call for me as to say, was there a goal on or not? And I, I can see it a bit like VAR and I can see this being a tough one now to call, I, as you said, in the spur of the moment. Have you any help from upstairs? Have you any help from, I know linesmen and umpires can help you on the day. Again, like, is upstairs going to come into play on that? No. No, uh, no, absolutely not. And um, linesmen won't come into play either, really. Like, you know, be, well, you can, linesmen can have their opinion, but, you know, in fairness, you know, you're often bit like you don't want to sound like too hard on linesmen and umpires and things, but you know, a lot of cooks can spoil a pro too, you know. And um look, personally I'd like to make I'd like to make a decision myself and stick by it, you know. And look, I, I don't see it being a massive issue. I I I I know what you're saying, TG. You think it's it's another it's an it's another rule that we have to implement and more pressure on us, but I don't know, is it though? I I, I like will can, can you see how do you see happening? In this year's championship, what happened last year with this new rule being brought in, will players deliberately pull down their opponent now that this rule is in? Or will it make the referees, instead of making our life harder, I think it might make our life easier. It might do, yeah. I think the players will be very aware of it. They'll be conscious of it and they won't want to do it. Certainly in a tight game, Fergal, they'll definitely be, definitely, like, if you were five or six points up in the last minute and someone do it, you could say they might, right? But, yeah. It'll be it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I was just kind of curious about that goal scoring chance. That's I suppose the piece for me. Yeah, I just to come in, just to finish up on, on I suppose on that bit, like I am very conscious of and I'm only one of thirty five lads or whatever it is on the panel at the moment and we're all starting out next week um from scratch um trying to get our place on the championship panel in six weeks' time. And look I'm at, it, I'm at it long enough to know, and you're, at, you're around long enough watching games to know, I expect a small few cheating problems in the National League. Absolutely. No doubt. OK? I'd be, I'd be talking complete rubbish here today if I said to you there wouldn't be a few issues. But we haven't got together as a referee's body yet. It's, it, well, that's happening this week, OK? For obvious reasons. So I'm, we, have, we have three rounds of the league, two or three rounds of the league, then we have a week off, and then we have two more rounds of the league. Five rounds, I think. And we'll probably meet the third week when we're doing after the two first two rounds. But I'm very confident by the time that we kick off in June, that we there'll be 25 or 30 matches played, and we'll have a lot of footage to go over. I'm very confident by the time June comes around, and the championship panel is nine or ten or whatever the new committee who've come in with Oakthorn, Larry McCarthy, it came in with him when they sit down to pick their panels. Do you know that we will be in a lot better position and. Um, I'm very, I, I think by, 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 by the time June comes around, both the players and the referees will be a lot clearer on what action will be taken in the championship. Yeah, I think, I think like, we, we, we've kind of complained a little bit about not being enough goals and goal scoring chances and great saves as well as that. So I, I think where you're coming from is probably right for that it will stop the cynical defender from making that call. Just to take it back, Fergal, it was a motion that was passed at Congress, right? Now, to bring that to the exact rules, like leaving out the pulling of the jersey, pulling of a hurley, you can imagine a, fall, a corner back falling and he's able to grab a corner forward's hurley. You'd say it's the most cynical thing going. But where, how did we arrive at this position, Fergal? Or is that something you're aware of? Or just, just to ask you that, like that. I know it was a motion that was passed to Congress, but did that actually bring us to the, what was in the rule or what wasn't? Or would you have been consulted in that process? No, we we wouldn't have any we wouldn't have any say in in rule changes at all. Um, 
we we know that they'll be upcoming or they're they're in they're in the pipeline. But if, to answer your question, if had we any say in it, absolutely not. Um, that would be look. There was a lot of media. I think the media, like it's like anything, was was it was it media driven? Like there was a lot of there was a lot of talk last year around cynical fouls, whether it is on the Sunday game or even on if you read the papers and people are probably on about it and. The powers that be and managers or secretary county board officers think that there was a need for change. Personally, if you ask me, are you asking my opinion? Would I have would I have brought it in? No, I'd be a GM, I'd be a horror man. I'd like to see no, I'd like get on with it and this you know what I mean. Like, will it change? Will it if if, if a team is up four points in the All Ireland final and let us going through? Will Anthony Daly take take one for the team with 30 seconds to go? Absolutely. He won't change that. He, he won't might, change that. You might even need to go for. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, it's like circumstances are will alter cases. Um, but like, the, I suppose the big one with the sin bin is that there's going to be no replacement for him, which is, you know, in a game of hurling, it's not like football where you can go across the 21 for 10 minutes there and play a game of basketball. Um, hurling is in to end and 10 minutes with 14 minutes a lot. And look, it's big. It's going to be a big, big change. And, and look, Anthony, let, let's, we won't know we won't see the blood and thunder down the home straight in August, whether this has a massive impact on games or not. Yeah, yeah, no. So it's, just, uh, it's just, well, just one thing, Mark. For you, one. Yeah, you, yeah. Uh, we're all we've all um, spoken about uh, for the, um, you know how hard it is to keep fit and all that at the moment, and sick of shagging zooms and everyone has said it and be involved with teams and you're saying we'll do a Zoom, we'll do a table quiz, we're fucking fed up with the whole thing. Is it going to put an extra em- emphasis on fitness? Like, because you're going to call it that it's a penalty, cynical and and 10 minutes off the field. Is it going to put more pressure on refs that way? No. Um, the, the, the referee's decision has, you, you have to make a split second decision and it doesn't matter whether a team is down, you're asking whether to say t- teams are down to 14 men, is it? Oh, no, I'm to have a referee's decision. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Absolutely! Like yeah, yeah, it yeah. Play, like. it's, it's harder to make a call in the last ten minutes than it is in the first ten, obviously. You know, um, but look, we're we're on a we're on a we're we're being well looked after in Dublin, at the, um, obviously by um, DCU um, Niall Miner and Aidan Brady is, is is with us the whole time, and um, we're in Dublin Wednesday night for the fitness test for the National League. So um, no, we've been tipping away since um, early January because we were waiting for the league to start. Obviously, in the January, we were getting ready. So, and then we were looking at March. We kind of got a might go ahead in March. So, no, I, I think the, the, the one good thing about the National League, Anthony, is it's going to be played on top of the ground. And I always find, and you know you know yourself, boys, it's a lot easier to referee a match when the ball is flying A to B than it is in the down in Walsh Park in February, you know, or down in Innes when the bike in a you know, nice tight field and, you know, the boys will be pulling, be getting into you fairly hard and tough. And, that's the way it is, but when the ball is flying around the field, lads, lovely game to referee. Yeah, you wouldn't know fans, much about three, the couple of grounds, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're you're dealing with three fans of the uh what old National League in the tight, tight field and the slow <laughs> field, yeah, yeah. We wouldn't be we're a favor of nine mine in a Wednesday night, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but Sergey, um, yeah. Yes, TJ. So, I, I, at the start of every national league, you're always looking for something a little bit different, whether it's the hand pass or the hurley to the head or whatever it is. And obviously, the, this is going to be new now. Is there anything else we can be looking out for? For is there anything else that let's say there's a worry from the referee side? Well, no. The other, I suppose, the other big one is the head injury that they that's after them coming into play. Um, that's the referee. The referee can call a head injury now, and he can look for the player to leave the field to play, which I think is, a, is has been a great move because. You know yourself, like the, the hits that are, as I said to you earlier on, the, the size of the, the men we're dealing with now and the physique of them is different, different class altogether at the time when we were on panel, senior panels or under 21 or mine or whatever it was 20 years ago. They're just different animals. And the hits, even a shoulder to shoulder charge now, a legal one, can rattle every bone in a fella's body, you know. And um, look, I'm delighted that came in and that they can use a, a sub and it's not you, sorry, I won't say a sub, they can use another player and it won't count as a sub. And if he, if he stays on for the whole match, it still doesn't count as a sub. So, like, we're starting to learn learn um, about players' welfare. And even the referees now are, before, like, it was a case of, well, get up and play on. That that day is gone. And um, I, I think that's the big, big, that's the more important rule than, than the sin bin, to be honest with you. Because I think there's a lot of players getting um, 
head injuries and concussion that's, that's going undetected. Okay. Yeah, just um, so just to confirm, if there's a cynical foul out the field, we'll say out around the 45 yard line. So there was one particular foul last year where a Dublin player was chasing down um, a leash, it was a leash, was it? And he yeah, hit him with yeah. the hurley across the ankles and tripped him. That's still only a yellow card, Fergal. That's not a sin binning situation. No, it's just a yellow card, unless the referee deemed it a strike and he could give him a red. But if it's a trip, yeah, it's yeah. out there, it's just a yellow. Okay. okay. And now, okay. so it now just comes down then to the line, so the semicircle and inside the 21 yard line. Where are you now in terms of help or maybe getting help from technology? And I won't preempt what you're going to tell me, but I have a fair idea. But um, technology has been a big part of our discussion here because you know and I know that a penalty awarded, um, a sin binning of a player, and a foul may look like it's committed outside the semicircle or outside the 21-yard line. Are you going to want to go to technology to confirm what your suspicions are? A bit like Hawkeye. Don't take a chance, Les. The technology is there. Let's use it. So I won't preempt, but I'm going to leave it open to what you're going to say. I can, I can answer that very straight and honestly. Um, we're not we, by rule. We can't use any technology for. Do you know what I mean? It's all. It's all. The only tool we have at our disposal is um, to go to Hawkeye for a point, even for a, even a ball across the goal line. No assistance, unfortunately. Um, all them, all them. To, 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 just, to, just to let you know, um, and you're well aware yourself, you're all GM, and all them rules would have to be passed by Congress for them to be. Um, you ask, like, would it be great to have that tool? Absolutely, I'd love to have it. I'd love to be, you, absolutely. I, I, yeah. I have no yeah. problem in saying it. Anything that makes my life easier on the field and get the right decision. I don't want to go home and. Keep her playing Galway. I won't be doing it. Well, tip, tip Galway and, tip, and Limerick, and I give a penalty that was outside or a sin bin, and the man was outside the D. Absolutely not. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Who, um, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to have, but we don't have it. Um, we have we have umpires and we have linesmen that'll be running alongside us. So I, I think between the three or four of us, we'd be hoping that we get it right. But as regards technology, yeah. that won't be at our disposal, no. You'll be you'll like, be blown so for you'll be blown. We'll say your man is maybe just a step inside the twenty, and you'll be saying, "Les, was he inside?" To my linesman, like, and they come back, yeah, definitely gone inside by the time he's fouled. So mm. that, that's how instant it will be, is it? That's how instant it will be, and plus, <clears throat> plus most of the big venues now, the lines are very, very clear on the field. It's very hard. I like I, I know what you're saying. Like, would you miss it? It's very hard to miss that, Anthony. I, it's very clear when a player is inside the twenty meter line, and you get so used to referee matches that level. You've a, you've a, you've a very good. You've a, it's very easy to to feel where a lad is on the field. You know what I mean? You know, you know where he is on the field, and I, that that won't be the issue. The issue would be more like TG said of um, um, if he's pulled down inside the twenty meter line over near the sideline. That's a, that's where the scenario will come in. Yeah. You have to use your judgment on is that a goal scoring opportunity? That's where the problem will arise. I think TG has a point on that one. You know that yeah. could be a problem. Yeah. And it, well, I'm, I'm against it. Will it be there for club for you? No. No. Oh, we, we clear up that as well from the last set. This, we this has only been this is this has only been trial in this year's national league and championship, and then there's another congress at the end of the year, and they'll decide whether this is passed or not. Not for the club in 2021. That's great. Anyway, we've cleared that up for listeners as well. They probably knew anyway more than we did. <laughs> but you know, just yeah, yeah just but I, I make you think going forward, though. Like that, if something is passed at Congress, it would be a great idea to bring in the refs and ask them what they thought would be the best best way of working the rule. You know, you have to keep the ethos of the rule, obviously. Do you know, uh, obviously the motion was that maybe refs could put off a cynical foul. Like we we want we 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 mentioned three of them. We're not afraid that it was Danny Sutcliffe in the in the Dublin Leash one. We mentioned Adrian Tui on Jamie Callan, and we mentioned Ronan Maher on Conor Whelan. They were the three just top off our top of our heads. And I could see where the fellow at home would say, I, I'm putting in a motion to the club, but you know, surely going forward, we should involve the, the top referees in, in clarifying the rules so there is no confusion. Yeah, again, um, we just don't have, we, we don't be asked, and I suppose we're like, we're not officers or we're not, um, we're not on committees in, in Crow Park. And to be honest about it, I just read a referee to match Anthony. And if that's, if that's the rule, that's, if, that's the, if that's the wording of the rule, 
well then that's my job to implement it to the best of my ability. But like you have a point in what you're saying. Obviously, anyone that's making changes, you should nearly nearly normally ask the people that would be involved. But look, it that's we're not at that level. We're not at that um, in that position, and um, we just have to trust the people that are. You know. Yeah. 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 Um, like, so I'm against you, you, the technology, you, you. Mac. I think VAR what? would be a disaster, and I don't. I don't think we need it. I think it's made a ball of soccer in the UK. It's turning people off watching it. It's certainly turning me off watching it. So, for, what I'm going to say to Fergal is, I think it's a monumental waste. I two things to say here, actually. I rarely get to talk to a referee like this, right? Because they are telling me, "Will you just go out there and shut up?" <laughs> right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so two things I'm going to say to us. I think it's a monumental waste, Fergal, if you're a linesman, right? You can't have an influence on the game, right, to help the referee. I know what you're saying about too many cooks, right? But have two experienced referees on either side of the pitch, right? Surely there's something more that could be done there with a referee. That's number one. And number two, right, is the other one that's my bugbear at the moment is the whole steps thing, right? I know you're saying it's 34 or 5 year, right? And I know that maybe some mightn't be part of the curriculum for the referees, right? But there's a lot of referees getting steps very much wrong for them. You probably can't say anything about them, though, but they're easily. Yeah, um, I suppose the first one, the linesman, yeah, he was not a bit there, the other one. I, the linesman, the linesman can our ear and, and tell us um, what, what he, but it's up to the referee to whether he agrees with him or not. That's that's up to the referee on the day. He can take it on board what he says, like i.e. a red card, yellow card inside the twenty meter line. So yeah, he, the referee is mic'd up to us, and he can he can tell us what he sees. And if we are in agreement with okay. him, we'll, we'll we'll implement that. On 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 the second one, the steps the steps and the hand pass are issues. That we have here. Um, I can't I can't disagree with you. The steps are a problem. Um, but there's something that we're going to have to sharpen up on. Okay. Now, and Fergal, I'm, I'm the complete opposite end of TJ. I'm a big believer in the technology, and I believe that the rugby fraternity have got it right nearly 100% of the time. And what I also see from the rugby as well is the communication between the lines, the umpires, with the referee. They're nearly all on cue all the time, and it's very obvious that they have a very, very good relationship with all the, the, the linesmen and the referee. But I, I'm like, we have technology in the big stadiums. Surely the technology must be brought into it. You're only going to be using it on one or two occasions where you're just unsure. And if you're two linesmen, I said to you, Fergal, I'm not 100% certain whether he was inside or outside the line. It'll only take uh, 20, 30 seconds to get that right. And as you say, the last thing you want to do is be at home that night watching the Sunday game with your family or going to work, delivering posts the following morning at six o'clock and some fella waiting for you to do say, hey, you got that one fairly wrong last night. Comparing rugby to hurling now, right? Yeah. He's, 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 he's not fair. No, no. You're comparing the, the use of technology to get the correct decisions right. And lads, it's, will that, it's, that's it's an American football. But the referee, the referee can make that call. Yeah, we... Let let the referee go and use technology if there's any bit of doubt. Mac, yeah, Patrick, 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 Patrick good. Good. sent me the email. Um, he sent me an email about a month ago. And I got him to resend it again, Mac, because obviously when we're off the air, you look at us. I said, Pat, send it on to me. Yeah, again. yeah. Come at yours, obviously. It, it was very interesting. He said, uh, you know, you saw it in the rugby the other night. I didn't really see it now, but I was able to Google it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like he was saying about a captain's uh, call, a captain's call or a captain's challenge that each yes. team would have won. And I think was it Connacht used it the other night uh, to challenge right at the end. Uh, did, did also get a try, but there was there was there a knock on or something? I don't know what the rules of the thing even, but it worked for them and they got it re replayed, looked at in the stand, and no try and they won the game. I think was that the gist of it anyway? Yeah. But I think that's the gist of his suggestion anyway. Like. Yes, basically that the captain has a right to challenge the decision of the referee and the decision goes upstairs to be viewed on the TV monitor where the TV referee makes a decision 
that uh, the referee has made the wrong call. Um, if, if the captain has been proved to be correct, he continues to hold his captain's call for the rest of the game. If the referee has proved to be right and the captain was wrong, well, he can dispute no further uh, decision by the referee for the rest of the game. So that's yeah. that's what the captain's call is about. Or some, an interesting one. I, know, I know you said it the last day, you're kind of looking at maybe <laughs> four 20-minute quarters now if we're keeping the water break in. And for I suppose... That's, will you miss them where for us? No, absolutely not. Um, <laughs> we one of the most I famous did. ones at club level here, no? Yeah. Uh, the issue, the issue. I just going back to Mark's point. The issue I'd have with um, the captain having his, which is fine. Like I just think, I just think we're playing a different level, a different speed game altogether too. That rubbish in England soccer and and um, and rugby, like is, we're playing at a different speed, like. You hold up a game there for you hold up a game there for a minute in a game of hurling. You're taking look, let's this is a different we're at a different level of we want we want intensity in our game and we've we've we had it all our lives. Don't complicate things, keep it simple. We're human beings. If we make a mistake, the player will make a mistake, the goal will drop a ball into the net, the full back will make a mistake. It it what we're GA people, it's part of life. Let's not don't don't fix something that's not broken. <clears throat> but for, hold on a while, Fergal. Now, to be fair, right, it is slightly broken on some of the big calls. So go back to Austin Gleeson and the the ball that wasn't behind the post, right? That was against that was water for the Tipperary, and mm. there was a goal awarded, and it was clearly shown that Austin Gleeson's hand was outside. Now, if Waterford won that game, they could possibly have qualified for the championship. That was a big call, Fergal. And I'm only saying in incidents whereby there might only be one or two, there may be no incident, Fergal. The technology is there. And you've already admitted, your, you, you've admitted yourself that you don't want to be at home at night having made the wrong decision, particularly when the technology is there, Fergal. And I, I agree with you, you know, that we don't want the game held open. But lads, this is a culture. We are changing. We are evolving all of the time. And if the punter coming through the door is paying 70 or 80 quid to go to a match, right, um, I think he deserves to get the calls right and go back. The most, the most recent one is the semi-final against uh, Kilkenny and Limerick, whereby it was clear and obvious that the defender, uh, the semi-final, the defender uh, blocked the ball. It, went out for a, it should have went out for a 65, and it was missed by the umpires. It was missed by the linesman. It was missed by the referee, Fergal, with all due respects. And... Uh, Limerick were beaten by a pint. Am I right in saying that, TJ? Yeah, and that yeah, was missed yeah. by all the officials that day. So, Fergal, to be fair now, the technology is there and it, it has to be used, Fergal. And it's your friend, Fergal, is what I would be saying. I'd be using the technology. The technology, the technology for the Limerick, the technology for the, the war for tip match, in the, there, would, there wouldn't be any technology in the Gaelic rounds to call that. But, your Fergal, we saw it on television. Everybody that was watching the match live could see... No, what I'm saying to you is in, in, in Crow Park, where you have Hawkeye, if the ball crossed the line, they would be able to make a call on it. But in, 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 inside in the Limerick goals. or a normal field, you can't, so you're saying to us, what you're looking for is that you go over to, to a monitor and, and judge it for yourself on the day underneath the stand like a soccer match. That wouldn't work, Mark. No, what, I, what I'm saying, Fergal, is that I think you could see that from the big screen exactly the same as what's on television that Austin Gleeson's hand was outside the post and it was shown on the replay of the television live on the match. The same way as the, the ball that went wide for the Kilkenny sideline mm. ball against Limerick, it was obvious seeing it on the television that was replayed straight afterwards, uh, Fergal, that it hit the players hurley and was deflected out for a 65. That should have been picked up, Fergal, on that day. Could you see, Fergal, that maybe on one occasion, now that was the situation, you'd have a Declan Hannan coming over to you and say, ref, we want to make our challenge on that line ball. That that was touched by Killian Buckley. It's a 65 for us. And you just go upstairs. You needn't run over to any monitor. Mm. Would you just say, right. lads, I have a captain's challenge here. Uh, Limerick <laughs> questioning uh, whether the ball went wide or was touched. Boys have a quick look at it. Under, I mean, I was in the studio that day. Well, I wasn't on that night, I think, but we led straight away were able to tell me, like, uh, and I was rushing to get into a taxi to get back to RTE, but 
I said, Les, what was the story? No, we, it wasn't too clear watching the game down real time, but they were able to tell me straight away, like before I got out of the RT box to go back to, to Donnybrook, that it, it had come off Buckley early. Yeah, well, the, that Kilkenny Limerick match that Mark brought up is probably a great. It's probably it's probably the best um, example that you example. could have you could have brought up in the fact that it was the last puck of the game, right? Time was up, and there would have been no there would have been no great um, stop to the game. You could you could have had, you could have had a look at it, but I, I'm just talking about in general, okay? I don't know, and I think TG yeah. is in agreement on that one. That like, would you be stopping the match a GA match every? So you're just saying. Maybe your no. Mark is looking for one. You're just looking for one call, Mark. Is it one? Well, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Oh Jesus! Yeah. Okay. We we want to keep the game moving as much as yeah. possible. But when there is a clear and obvious yeah. situation, and look, yeah. you'll know straight away if a player is bluffing right. you or not. Mm-hmm. You you've seen many players down through the years trying to scallywag with you, but you know the genuine mm-hmm. the genuine fellow as well. Like I said, listen, you're wrong there. That's a wrong call. Well, look. To be yeah, honest, to be going. honest with you, if to answer your question truthfully. Um, any tool that 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 that, that, that the GA will put into a referee's toolbox, as the fella says, that'll make my life easier. I'd be all for it, and I would I would agree with you 100. percent If if that's what was brought in, I'd be delighted. I'd no problem doing it. But it would only want to be one. It wouldn't want to be. We wouldn't want to be because that VAR in England is a. Oh, yeah, that's a disaster. disaster I, to say, to, to, I have no to problem say with that. The least. So. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously, if 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 that was brought in and we could use that once in a game, if we got the decision right, yeah, absolutely, all the referees want to get the right decisions for every team and every player. So, Fergal, we, we take it like what you you love it moving, so we all do. Like, what what's your feeling with the water breaks then? Like, and I know you said straight away you didn't miss them where for us from coming across making a change, but also probably having a snipe or two on their way, as you can imagine. Yeah, well, I, I, again, uh, personally, water breaks to me in, in a normal year is a no-no. I wouldn't be far going forward like some people are saying, four twenties or whatever. Absolutely not. Um, again, the rhythm of the game, and we've seen it last year alone, how many times it altered um, big games, like the, the turnaround after the after the 17 to 20 minutes, whenever it was. Certain teams were, able to, were, were way better at it, and that's been proven um, by tactics. We've seen that, okay? So... No, I, I'd love to go back. I'd love the 35 minutes aside. It's, it's, it's brilliant. It's in in stuff. But look, at the moment, with COVID the way it is, we all have to row, row in behind the water breaks. And that's fine. But to answer your question going forward, would I want it? No, absolutely not. I, I think the two thirty fives is a great game of Ireland and it doesn't need to be altered. I agree anyway with that. I definitely, I definitely think, I think you missed him there, Horner, Fergal, surely. Like, I, I kind of felt there. <laughs> I I felt that sometimes, you know, if we had a poor start to the game and their free count was maybe eight two or eight one or whatever, like I go into the reps out, just we're we're hardly that dirty. We we are creating all the fouls. Do you know what I mean? But I feel I I feel then that we might get a handy one in the next two or three minutes, right? So I kind of feel that the Mayor Forner's role would be critical to the game, or certainly at club level. Well, I would be. My That's answer that would be TG. <laughs> My answer to that were if you come in to me, I'd say to you're the one getting the big money, you get to you get it right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I found it by Fergal, I must say, um when Dalo was um when Dalo was told us during the week that that, that you were on, I went back and I looked at Dalo in the final last night, right? And uh, my initial reaction last year after the final was that you gave water for a hard time, okay? And um, I'd have to retract everything I said afterwards because I watched it back last night in the cold light of day, and I must say you gave some performance. You gave a brilliant performance, and you weren't hard in water for all. I got it wrong, I must say. But you, I thought you gave a, a fantastic display of refereeing in last year's all Ireland final. Now, you, couple you of things cut, from you it. Did cut, you did cut I, out of him the Monday morning. Well, I just said I thought he was hard in water for it, right? <laughs> uh, but... I must say, I, but come here, Dale, it's like everything. Sometimes you get a run too, like, you know. What was it like to referee the game with no crowd there? Well, look, you'd, obviously, um, you'd miss, you know, everyone misses the crowd. It's, it's part and parcel of the, of the big day. Um, but it, did, it didn't change the way we, we went about our business and the fact that we, we went up to Castle Knock to Saturday as normal and as a team and stayed in Castle Knock under, under the COVID um, 
guidelines. And I have to say, Castlenock Hotel were excellent in the way they um, accommodated us. And um, the Sunday morning was normal. And in 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 on taxis, the normal way um, was excellent. And obviously, <clears throat> the Joe McDonough final was on force, like the minor match would have been in a normal year. So everything about the All Ireland final last year was the same as it was in seventeen for me, except that you missed the crowd. Like you 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 obviously. When you come out on to, into, into Crow Park on the final day, and the three of you have, have, have experienced that, you know you know what it's like. But the hair standing on the back of your head, but like once the ball is thrown in, whether there's eighty thousand people there or there's no one there, you you have to be completely zoned in on 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 um, what you have to do. And if you're not, you'll be soon found out. And look, um, it was a privilege, obviously. To I was looking the fact that I refereed the last All Ireland in September, <clears throat> and I refereed one now in December. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Will that happen again? So I, I, I was delighted to be appointed to, to, to the final. To be honest about it, and um, um, look, it was, it was a, um, it wasn't as close as it was in seventeen. Obviously, um, Limerick are, are just a phenomenal on the day. Obviously, like the, they put the boot to the floor in the second half, and it was, it was, um, now, it was a great experience you, to be in you, the middle of it. You did miss the um. The little pork and the Leroy that Tom Manosi gave Aston Gleeson. Yeah. I missed a lot more than that. Well, uh, <laughs> if, that's, if that's all you miss, you'll have a good day. Baby. No. But, Fergal, I, I, I thought that the referees last year probably would have been easier for you um, with no crowd. Do you know what I mean? Let's say the crowd felt that the decision was wrong or whatever, you'd have. 25,000 people roaring at you and looking for the next decision I suppose I, I would have thought that with no crowd that it might be more maybe maybe less kind of pressurised Yeah absolutely um, especially if there's new referees coming on the panel it's, it was a great year to um, to throw them into games you know like we had a couple, mm. Ian Gordon was a new ref last year and he'd done Pip and Limerick and he'd done um, Clare and Wexford you know that was a great opportunity for, for, for new referees and Sean Stack done Cork and Limerick, Cork and Waterford, sorry, and another qualifier, you know. So, yeah, it, it, you're right. It was it, it, it was easier. It is easier referee, obviously, with no crowd. And it was an opportunity for, for new lads. And I think you'll see the same um, in the coming year. I think you'll see a few new faces on, on board. And and hopefully um, things will go well from the National League. Now, Fergal, uh, just a funny one there. Um, you know, all the talk last year coming up to it. I, I know it wouldn't bother you from, get, from having gotten to know you. All the talk about Liam and yourself, Liam Cal, having hurled together. Does that like would you be people saying that you on I know it was a weird year now, we weren't meeting any as many, but you would be um in your job. But was did that occupy any of your few minutes before you went to sleep time? No, absolutely not. Um um as I said to you earlier on, I don't do social media. You won't find me on any social media platforms. I'm not I'm not just coming on here saying that. I don't <clears throat> obviously for obvious reasons being a referee I don't I don't have an opinion on what Mark Landros thinks or TG thinks or you think you know what I mean um, look I played I had the honour of playing with Liam Cahill at minor under 21 and senior and I also um, was very close to Liam obviously when he, was, when he was the minor manager 20 manager 21 manager I'd done a lot of um, a lot of we'll say in-house games and went through like I did with you tonight the rules and um, myself and Liam would be would be would be, would be close in that respect since he took over Watford I haven't been involved with him in any capacity obviously he's what he's with Watford and I'm with I'm temporary so like I think in fairness to TJ someone said to me that you done a podcast and TJ Ryan said that he'd no issue with Fergal Horgan doing the all Ireland final um like I, I was only interested in one person the day of the all Ireland final and that was Fergal Horgan um obviously I wish Liam Cahill the best of luck I, I would know John Kiley as well as I know Liam Cahill from he's the principal in, the, in my neighbouring parish in Tip Town, and I, I know John Kiley as as well as I know anyone Liam Cahill or anyone. So, to answer your question, was I going to go out in our in our Ireland final um, to um, to help out either John Kiley or Liam Cahill? Absolutely not. Um, I think I, I'm a lot better person than that. If I make a mistake, I make a mistake genuinely. But as regards um, going out and not doing the job properly, the All Ireland final day is not the day to be doing that. Oh, no, Asher, look at that. That's just been bandied around by, you know, people putting up pictures of the two in an under-21 final team and stuff like that. <laughs> sure we, we but I was privileged. I was I was, yeah, I was, yeah. obviously privileged to play minor or 21 and senior with Tipperary. And um, Michael Beaven was on DIN teams too. But look, 
I went to college too with a, with a lot of lads that went on to play with Limerick and Cork and I refereed them and um, they were managers afterwards and look the GA is, is as you know is, is, is a small and tight community and and they daily won't go anywhere in Ireland or Mark Landers or TG Ryan with any team that they haven't crossed swords with someone before or been friends if Anthony Daly is over in the Pier Street tomorrow morning and, and TG Ryan is over Gary Spillane I can't see much favours coming from either the two of you or to the man in the middle so it's every man for himself lads on the big day, and I'm sure the three of you more so than anyone appreciate that. Ah, yeah, for, for sure. I, for I, think, I think anybody inside the ropes, I think, appreciates all that. Whether it's someone going to another county and playing their own county, or somebody refereeing, somebody who they know. Like, I think we're always looking for somebody of an angle here. And the papers will always look for something, some bit of a story. Like, so but I think inside the ropes, there's a huge respect amongst what you said there about coaches, players, referees. That everyone is there to do the best job they can for the team they're involved with in that moment. Um, Fergus, is, is there any danger of, of a kind of what we hear from soccer, uh, a, a danger of a kind of a diving culture creeping in with some of these forwards looking to draw the automatic penalty in the 10 minutes in the bin? Have you any oh, yeah, there's a big, forward? absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's, 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 that, that will creep in, but. We, we, we'll stem that out um, fairly quickly, I'd imagine. Um, we're not that easily fooled, you know, and, and a player feigning foul or injury, is the, he's the player that'll be yellow-carded. Um, unfortunately, he can't be sin-binned, obviously, but he will be yellow-carded. And um, no, no, that's, it's, it's very, that's, that's probably one of the easiest fouls in the game to, um, to spot quickly is the player diving. It's, it's, it's very easy to cop on. And we, don't worry, I, I can't see the referees being caught on that one. Good stuff, good stuff. That's great. I, I actually didn't know you could, a fella could dive and he could get a yellow card. So there's more. I, I get Sunday game people should be brought on a course. I think for these stats as well. <laughs> yeah, but the, 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 yeah, but the, 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 the one foul I, I think you know a number of years ago it happened in football whereby the defender was putting his hand in over the shoulder of the forward and then the forward was catching his hand and was pulling the defender down on top of him. And I think that some of the forwards at the moment are doing something similar, for, because the defender puts in the holly, and the forward is catching the holly, and he's pulling the defender down on top of him. And that's that's one of the. I think it depends on the referee, Fergal, on the day, who how they see that. There's two, there's two different fouls there. Um, just to clear up, if you put the holly in over someone's shoulder. It doesn't matter whether whether the other player holds his hurry or not. It's still a free. You cannot put the hurry in that in that in high. So straight away, that's a foul. Okay. You're saying, well, just say, just for instance, over yeah. the shoulder. If you put the hurry yeah. in around the air, yeah. So it's a over, right? Yeah, it's a free. It's, it's around the neck. It's, it's it's too high. It's not allowed. Um, the one where you come in around the waist, and I that's that's the one that is the is the issue where put the hurry in to flick away the ball, and your man puts his hand in on each and pulls you down. That's that's the yellow carrot to the player that pulls you that, that pulls him down. That that should be easily catch as well. Um, I think the problem with the other one is that when when he puts his hurry in over his neck and he pulls him down, the referee will give the free in because it's deemed as as a high tackle. It's a it's a foul in the first instance. Yeah. Okay. The head yeah. the head has become sacred ground in in a hurling match and, and football obviously, and it's the one place that um, there's no discretion on a referee's part. We have to pull them once. Yeah, no, it's, it's again. I, I just saw the incident with Jack Prendergast and Keane Lynch on the television again last night. In fairness to you, Jack Prendergast had with a, with a kind of a half or holly had caught him across the ear. You gave a foul into a free to Limerick, but you didn't, you didn't yell a car Jack, because you obviously made up your mind that it was an accidental collision rather than an intentional shot. Yeah, yeah, there was no intent in it. Um, it was part of play. He went to get the ball. Key Lynch nipped in in front of him. Obviously, Keane is a fabulous. He's very nippy and brilliant hands, and just got there before him. And I use my discretion. They they probably say I, I they probably say I could have yellow carded him. If I gave him a yellow card, I would have been correct because he got him to the side of the ear. But I felt on the day it was a complete accident by from Jack Prendergast. So I wasn't going to book yeah, him I, just for the sake. I, I, just but for I, the sake I, of I, I, but but for, I I would say that's that's the number one referee in this country speaking here now, right? Whereas I think if you had, we say like the Liam Gardens, or the, and I can, I'm, I'm sorry for bringing up the, their names, but a younger referee or a more inexperienced referee might have played that one by the book and given them the yellow card. 
Yeah, well, obviously, <laughs> obviously, um, that comes with experience, and you know, when you've an Ireland final done, um, and you get a second or third, like James Owens would have three finals done, and I have two finals done, and we're the only two referees at the moment on the panel that has all Ireland finals refereed, and. Look, it's like it's like it's like playing on all irons and winning all irons. You have to use your discretion um, with these things. And look, you can get carried away too. And look, these all the Liam, Liam, the Liam Gardens and these lads, they'll get their day. They'll get their chance. And um, it's I was there in fifteen, sixteen, same way. Like you, 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 you just you, you go by the book. And on all iron final day, you have to go. You have to. You have to be. You have to be sharp and you have to you have to be able to make split decisions as I said to you it's, it's, it's all about feel for the game and look I played the game myself and I know when a fella if a fella turns and he pulls across the fella it's an easy decision like but the Jack, the Jack Prindles I guess one on, on Jack on Keane Lynch was just complete speed of thought from Keane Lynch and yeah. why was I going to give a yellow card just to tick to tick to tick um, tick off something on a list boxer, yeah, yeah it's not for me it's yeah. it's um <clears throat> My my opinion on it is if they want me to refer if they, if they if I'm picked to referee the match, I'll referee the game and you know I I give it I give it my best shot and if if, if that, the day that's not good enough, I'll be left on the sideline and I can't do anything about that. For international rugby, the referee will take let's say an email from each camp I think up to five or six days before the big game or whatever, right? So let's say if I was playing. Because Landers, he always holds the hurley from behind, goes down daily, comes out, pulls the jersey, goes down looking for the handy free. Like, can you see a situation like this maybe before championship games where each manager will be able to get a little bit of his chest? So at least he's telling the referee to look out for this. Well, it's happening both sides, right? Is this something that could happen? That's in, in, in that what the mere foreigner used to. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Now, now that the mere foreigner is gone, like, like you know yourself. The, the amount of analysis going on in each camp now is at, at a level that hasn't been there before. It's off the charts. So they're analyzing everything from the referee to every position does, and they will spot things that are certainly constant. So they'll see a cornerback or a back that he always does this and he's getting away with it. So if the manager can do on the Monday, do you know what I mean? At least he's got his chest. I'm, I'm just wondering, would it be would it be good for the game? No, he he also has the other manager doing the same for let's say for Limerick or whatever. So I'm just wondering, would that bring about improvements? Yeah, so, um, to be to be an option, but like um, the cornerback that 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 the other manager has highlighted, all the referees would 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 know who he is too. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I wouldn't need TG Ryan or Anthony Daly to tell me that. Um, Fergal Horgan is holding the corner forward every day he goes out. Like we're 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 looking, we're being educated every week too on um, on matches that have been played last week and the week before, and the matches were coming up to referee. So like we know what's going on on the ground, the very same as as the manager and um, the players do. They might they mightn't realise that, but we're 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 getting as much education as they are. Um, there's no there's no stone left unturned in Crow Park <clears throat> with the resources that we have at our disposal. So we we're not going into any match um, blind, as as we're not going into any match looking for anyone in particular or any hassle. We want to referee the game without any 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 issues, if at all possible. But we're, we're, we we know what we're looking out for. We know what's going on. And like Mark said, watch the fill up the player pulling down. We we know if, if there's a certain player doing that, and we're well honed into that. Right. Uh, one of, one of the things I I I will miss for about the crowd being back in is being up on the TV gantry. And being able to shout down before the All Ireland final. Don't make a balls of it, Fergal. <laughs> you, you, you done that this year, sir. You done that I last year anyway. You still done it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it would have no effect if there was a crowd there. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with the RT well, kind of the platform was right over the referees. Don't we? Don't we all? Don't we all wait for the day that there will be eighty thousand at a match again? Please God, oh, sometime God, soon. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We won't have it this year, but we will. We'll have it back. You know? Yeah, yeah Fergal. The um, one thing that, that comes up a, a fair bit is that um, some decisions you would always say, "Oh, the ref, somebody must have had a, a word in his ear from upstairs." So there's one in, there's one decision that comes to mind straight away is um, Tipperary were playing with Brian Hogan. The, the goalkeeper's hand went behind the um, crossbar, and the ball was pucked out. There was a free award. The free was taken. There was a there was a point awarded to Tipperary, and then at that stage, 
the I suppose it must have been Hawkeye must have called it that the ball was over the post and the free the, the point was taken away from Tipperary and was added and went back for a puck out. So can you go through that was was that Hawkeye that made that decision that day? And the other question is, um, are you the referee mic'd up upstairs during the course of the game? Yeah, so <clears throat> to clarify the Hawkeye situation, the, the Hawkeye one baffles me as regards watching the match when I come home or what the pundits... Like, I'm very surprised that um, the lads that are commentating on matches actually don't know exactly what's going on. And it's it's it's, it's there now since 2013. And I suppose I had the, the unlucky um, job the same day when, when the Hawkeye broke down in the minor semi-final where um, <clears throat> what, uh, young Barry... Um, Limerick. Limerick Barry Nash. Yeah. Yeah. Barry Nash yeah. um, we yeah. gave a point and, and it was disallowed because the Hawkeye was, was set for the football settings on the same day. But um, what happens is, it's very sim- simple, is that we're the Hawkeye is, is, is in the dressing room for us when we arrive at the match. Um we're all the four umpires are mic'd up, and the referees mic'd up. The two linesmen and the fourth official, and the Hawkeye official who's in who's in the Hawkeye boot, which normally in hurling at the moment would be Willie Barris or Dickie Murphy, two former referees. So the Hawkeye protocol is very straightforward in the fact <clears throat> you've two. There's two options. Option one is if the umpire is unsure that the ball has not gone between the posts, he can automatically not go for a, a, a wide ball or a pint, he'll make the Hawkeye signal, which is a square, like a square television. In the instance that he waved the wide or he gave a pint, and either decision was incorrect, Hawkeye will inform us, i.e. Willie Barrett or Dickie Murphy, within seven seconds, if that decision is incorrect. If that decision is, is incorrect, then, the, then it's, it's wide or a pint and it'll be waved wide if it's wide or a pint. If it's a pint, you get a pint. But if Hawkeye comes in and the umpire has made a decision, you automatically know that the umpire's decision is wrong. Because Hawkeye won't intervene. You won't hear from Hawkeye at all unless the umpire has got the decision wrong. So you'll often hear people on television saying, geez, that looked tight. Why didn't he go for Hawkeye? Well, that's the answer for you. That's the nuts and bolts of it. He didn't go for Hawkeye because the umpire is correct. It's a pint. So Brilliant. that's why you don't look for Hawkeye. If, Hawke- if it's wrong... Only- sorry, are we, only Hawkeye two- are we only two stadiums, Fergal? Just, just Turles and... Um, is, yes, is Hawkeye just two Park- stadiums. Is it in Parky Kiev? No. It was in Parky Kiev in 2017 quarterfinals. Okay. But it was only for the day. It's not there. It's not in Parky Creek. Okay. okay. So two pitches. And that is the protocol. If if you're wondering why on television, why it's not, that is the reason. It's quite simple. If the if the umpire gave a point and it looked wide, it wasn't, it was a point. It's it Hawkeye will only intervene if the umpire is incorrect. Okay. And and in the situation with the Brian Hogan incident, you mentioned the seven seconds there. There was obviously something because either Dickie Murphy or Willie Ballot obviously wasn't in the boot that day because it took about a minute and a half to get the decision to, that day. Was there any particular reason behind that, Fergal? Um, or do you, I think if you go, you don't have if to you say go no back to, to... No, I think if you go back to the game that you're on about, it was the, the semi-final. Was it Tip and Wexford, was it? I yeah. think so, yeah. That's, that's the game, Anthony. Yeah, that's the game. That's yeah. the game, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I think what happened that day was... Um, that Brian Hogan caught the ball and just poked down underneath the Hogan stand. Yep. And I think a tip player caught it and was fouled around the nick. Mm. Okay? Yeah. And the referee yeah. the and referee was... went the referee went over to speak to the Wexford man. Uh, could he give a yellow card, but he gave him a, a speaking to. And I think he got lost. He got caught up in the fact that he was after giving the free and he was talking to the player. And if you go back to the match, the free was taken quickly and went in. And Tip, Jack, Tip actually didn't get a point. Tip got a goal in that game. Sorry. Not a point. Yeah. So it yeah. was a four-point yeah. turnaround. So it wasn't, that wasn't the Hawkeye issue as the as fact that, um, that it was relayed slow. I just think a lot of things happened in that 10 seconds. 
and that's what happened on that day. Um, and with full capacity, you know, um, they are, are supporters roaring them, and that was a very, very intense game. If you think back to West yeah. Yeah, very well, intense yeah. game. Um, but no, um, Dickie and, and Willie, in fairness, they, it, no, I would say they have to go back and, and review it on <clears throat> to make sure it's, it's right. See, that ball didn't actually hit the ground, it just went over the crossbar, hand behind the crossbar, yeah. and brought back in. So, you know, it's not as but clear. Like what, what, but, Fergal, what, what, what it does, what, you, you feel that was a, that's a fantastic explanation uh, as to why Hawkeye does come in. So, it's, it's basically if the umpire gets a decision wrong, Hawkeye intervenes. But the clarification of the length of time that it takes for it to be corrected is fantastic as well because that now then proves my point on the technology that the lads in the boot can be your friend any day. So if you get 20 seconds or 30 seconds, and I don't think the paying punt or minds waiting for 20 seconds to get a decision right, and you as a referee are the linesman or the umpires who are amateurs and are not paid and have got to go to work on a Monday morning, the last thing you want is to get a decision incorrect. Are your, are your linesmen or your umpires, for that matter, I think it takes a lot of pressure off those guys. And I, I definitely think technology, with the speed of what you've clarified, how, it, how a decision is made, has to, has to be brought forward. Yeah, the only, the only time that Hawkeye becomes an issue, even from a punter point of view, or Anthony commentating on a match, or whatever the case may be, is the Brian Hogan situation, okay? I.e. where a player brings the ball back from over the crossbar. Normally the ball would hit the, hit the net or go wide, right? Then, then there becomes loads of time to, to get for Hawkeye to work properly. Do you know what I'm saying? The seven seconds. Yeah. yeah. But if the ball is brought down from over the crossbar, it hasn't gone dead. And the game is, the game, seven seconds is a lot in the game of hurling. The ball could be in the net at the other end, no problem. And that's where the problem arose that day, that the ball didn't go dead, that it was brought back from over the crossbar. And that's the only time that um, the time the time could come into question. Well, tell but, you, but a, a big, it's a big help for when, when from now on anyway, when you'll be doing com, co commentating and a point is given, and I'm saying I'm, I'm surprised I didn't go to Hawkeye for that one. It was very tight. That's because mm. it is a point, and and the umpire's decision is correct. We know going yeah. forward. I know when you're going forward. Finding out a lot. But, but, that. but also, also Anthony. The fact that the goal was disallowed and the point was awarded to Wexford does prove that the public want the correct decision made and the players and the team and the officials want the correct decision made. You had no ambiguity afterwards. Everybody understood straight away that Brian Hogan had brought the ball back from behind the posts and there was no complaints from anybody. I say at the same time, it was a good thing the tip won the match. Mark, do you know, like they got they got they got a goal wiped off, and Wexford got a point awarded. Like no tip. Won That's right. Yeah, but but like I don't, think, a, I don't think you could have any issues with um the referee on that one. I think the referee that was hundred percent correct. If the ball is over the bear, I'm a tip man, and it was a tip goal that was disallowed. But the referee and the and the Hawkeye got the right decision that day. It was a point. Correct. No point in saying if Tip had hadn't won the match. That incident was 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 one hundred percent correct on the day. That one was correct, and that's the way it should be. That's what we want. That correct. The right team. The right team gets the right decision. I know. I, I know. I, I I can just imagine being in RTE, though, lads. And, and one of the things is the, the amount of emails in and the amount of messages in. I am um, complaining and what you know. Most of the time, it's the same people probably complain every Sunday. But on that one, I remember remember thinking to myself at that time that. I was on the panel, I think, that day. That that's just as well tipper after winning this because there would have been a fair bit. But I, I no issue that it, the correct decision was made. Don't but Delo, De- De- go go back to the Leinster football final a number of years ago, Mead and Loud, whereby Joy Sheldon threw the ball over the line and a goal was awarded to Mead. Like like if you're a, lo- a loud player or a loud supporter or the loud management team that day, you're fairly sick to this day that you, you had a Leinster football medal in your back pocket. A lot of players were denied a medal that day because the decision was incorrect. The player threw yeah, the ball again, into the net. Again, you're back to the same scenario as 65 for Limerick. You know, if we'd stopped it, a, a captain's challenge, and he'd say he threw it in, so free out. And, and I, we're back to that. I, wouldn't be, I would be in contact with you. One challenge 
we should think about it. Yeah. One, one. But, I wouldn't but, but even the second but, one if he was proven right. But, but how, many, how many of them decisions? How many of them big decisions have we come across in the last twenty years? Half a dozen. That's all. Yeah. So, so you're, saying, you're, saying to, you're saying to me we're getting we're getting ninety nine point nine percent of it right. So, so I, that's I think I, you are. I, 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 yeah. I think the referees are doing an unbelievable job. But I do like the obvious ones are the Austin Gleeson ball. There wasn't a goal. The Joey Sheridan one. You know that that should have been corrected. Um, yeah. But that was that was that was a high stakes match because Loud Loud are never going to get back that opportunity. For like and. Absolutely, that'll yeah. haunt that'll haunt them for the rest of their lives in in that situation. And I, I, it, I was think... a, it was a big, it was a big, um, like in fairness, in fairness, the man, the man that refereed that match, unfortunately, like he didn't. That was that was the end of it for you know that was. But he, so he, but paid a he, price rushed, to he, it. he did. But he he rushed in, and more or less kind of said to his own is it a goal or not? He said yes. He put put up the flag, but if he got the opportunity to step back a second and say, right, lads. I want to go to Hawkeye for that decision because it was quite obvious with the loud players, the way they, they congregated around it, that they knew that your man had thrown the ball over the line. Um, yeah. Well, Hawkeye, 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 Hawkeye was not even in use that time. That was 2000. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't. But you couldn't, we can't, use, we can't yeah. use Hawkeye anyway for any um, match not. decisions. It's no. just not allowed. So. Yeah. And then, Mac, I'd yeah. be careful what you wish for. I, I, I don't has been any addition to the UK no. I think it's ruined the game I think we have the greatest and fastest right and you have to remember in Hurling right, we're probably heading for potentially north of 60 scores per game now, right, which is going to be literally impossible to manage from a technology point of view check every single one 7, 8, 10 seconds takes the buzz out of the game and I'm forecasting here right the 2021 I think we could potentially be in for the best monster championship ever I genuinely think that. I'll tell you my reasons why right I think the players have had the three, four months off where they've got all their body to get fully rehabbed, fully prepped, get their SNC on, right? I think the managers have the perfect scenario. Yeah, it's only a three week lead into the National League, right? But they have all their players. There's no side shows, no Fitz Gibbon Cup, no club is pulling off from no nothing. They're the perfect. I do think the league will be a little bit boxing because they'll be trying to get their first 20, 21, 22 players. But I think every team will be spot on for championship. I think it'll be the fastest and best yet. And we uh, we've uh, on that like uh, we've had the draws now, lads, all, all during the week. Obviously, um, we anything stand out? I suppose. I suppose obviously Limerick and Cork is the tie around Fergal, isn't it? Um, you'll probably be doing that. <laughs> um, well, normally, <laughs> no. First of all, to get on the panel. Um, yeah. That's that's. That's not just because you run the All Ireland last year doesn't give you. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. um, there's a lot of wars to go under the bridge. But look, um, normally the monster referees would be would be sent to Leinster normally, um, and we'd end up up there. But look, I just be delighted to do any game. But obviously, Cork and Limerick would be, and you know, I was, I suppose it's going back to when I was, my own days playing and things like the one team you always fear, even when you're going bad or or, or presumably going bad. Go back to go back to nineteen. Cork came into the Gaelic grounds and they, they 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 gave a lesson like they they whipped Limerick off the field. And I would be I would be, you know, I'm sure John Kiley will have him ready, but I just have a sneaky feeling for Cork. Yeah, it was it was it was the one when they, when they threw it out. I kind of gasped with like a clear got one yeah. for Brian Law. Brian Law can't complain about that because they beat him in the quarterfinal last year to be a chance for them to go to go back at them yeah. and to put putting clear people talking hurling again, thank God. And then the winners make me tip and everyone is wondering what tip will be like, like champions nineteen and what they come out like but let's what, what was the feeling on the ground in both Cork and in Limerick on the draw? Cork is it's the it's the hardest draw they could possibly get like as TJ had said you're playing the league, the monster on the All Ireland champions. What a fucking disaster! Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it was the toughest draw we could have expected. Like, you know, I, I think Cork will be on the back foot. Like, they'll be raging outsiders for the game. And um, I suppose with the big turnaround in players as well this year, uh, there'll probably be a lot of question marks as to what the starting fifteen will be. The likes of you know the Anthony Nash, the Christopher Joyce's, the Aidan Walches, the Conor Lahan's gone. So. Who will who will Keir Kingston be replacing them with? You know, but I mean we have a reasonably good record against Limerick. 
and you'll be hoping there's a bit of youth, I suppose, and a bit of enthusiasm. Um, it's unlikely that we'll catch um, Limerick off guard, I would say, because because we've had a good record against them. But it's 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 a real it's the toughest draw possible, I suppose, from a Cork point of view, meeting the All Ireland final. Yes, and TJ, is there much much trepidation around Shannon side? Like with Don Lugrady gone in as a kind of a defensive. Uh, master coach now as well and that being seen as their Achilles heel but it's true what I thought straight away when it came out was Cork have caused Limerick bother like yeah I, I have to say Delo I thought the draw was good for all teams. I even see Landers there there's a little bit of a, there's a, little bit of a smirk there like they, I just know about it they will be gunning for this they, they, they have all the time in the world to prepare for this the other thing that stands out for me is we have a potential Liam versus Liam in the other semi-final, which would kind of really kind of draw the attention. Yeah. So it would be like like there was a lot of Liam Kyle taking over tip sheeties there. So that, that that that'll be some semi-final. I think like there hasn't been three, like Limerick going for three in a row. There hasn't been three in a row done in Munster since the team of the late eighties, which is hard to believe actually. When I went just searching for that, it hasn't been done in north of thirty years. So it is a big ask. Um, Limerick are entitled to be favourites, um, what they've shown over the last number of years. But like our reference Cork is there for everyone to see, so definitely Cork won't be fearing as much as maybe some other teams. But I go back to what I was saying, Delo. I think I think we could be in for one of the best championships. I think that everyone, I think there'll be no excuses. I think that the players are there, you have full availability. Last year there was coming off either short or long club campaigns, mm. even in tip scenario there yeah. where there was Football and playing Hurling with the McGraths. It was a Wexford yeah. scenario where they played the Hurling Championship first. I think if you ask any of the inter-county managers, aside from potentially a short three week into the, league, into the league, that'll be fine because I think the league, without the way the league is structured this year, I don't think it'll be a major factor for any managers. But I think this is perfect. I think they'll all be very, very happy with this. And I think they have all their houses in order. And I think we're going to see the best of every team. Yeah, I think I'd you're agree. right. Yeah. yeah, I'd agree with TJ that I think that I think there's there's something in everything in the draw. Every team has got a bit out of it. I think Tip of the team that'll probably profit the most out of it, Anthony. Um, they were jaded last year, as far as I was concerned. I didn't think they had the enthusiasm that they had the year previous, and I think there could be a dark horse for the championship this year. Yeah, I think people will say it, or maybe there's not enough of Liam Cahill's young lads, if you like. Have been blown yeah. and, and 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 will the legs still be there then on a, on a roast and hot July day maybe for some of the older brigade? But look, I've no doubt you've no better um, cooks uh, to to make the meal anyway in Liam Sheedy and uh, Tommy Dunn etc. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Fergal, what would the feeling? I I presume you'd be addressing the Tipperary players about the rules a bit like you were us uh, or somebody will anyway in in these couple of weeks. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't have any contact with, um, believe it or not, with with with, um, with Tip Seniors really. Um, since Liam took over, I I don't think I even, I think I've done one match for twenty ones until twenty one manager. Um, no, they're fairly, they're fairly sharp. I'd say themselves, like as you said, they have someone involved in every scenario now, and I'm sure there's someone. Um, look, I might be called in the next week or two. I don't know, but um, <clears throat> I know, I know there's a lot of that twenty twenty one team that you were talking about there. There's ten or twelve of them gone in over the winter doing training. We we'll say doing their own programs at, on individual basis. And um, look, we need them. Um, you, you think uh, TG hit the nail on the head there? The one thing I'll say about last year and TG noted there is that we had a phenomenal tip championship last year. <clears throat> All the big guns got to the knockout stages, right? John McGrath and Noel McGrath were phenomenal for their clubs in both hurling and football. You know, and they're real. They're, they're real ambassadors. They, sh- they, they really show how how club players should perform. For their clubs, and I can certainly tell you, not every not every club player performs the way they do for their clubs. And um, John McGrath, I'd say, at by the time Tip team came around, he wasn't able to wag like, and they lost a exactly. the few county yeah. finals as well, and lost to Hurland in very dramatic circumstances. Um, I'd say that they took a lot out of him. But <clears throat> John McGrath will be will is a serious tool, as you know, on his day, and we didn't see any of that last year. And I just think I wouldn't I wouldn't write off Tip at all. Um, in the coming year, I think parties and the Brendans, like Taurus were knocked out early, Boris Lee were gone early, and TG said it even about Limerick, they were off for the three or four months, and they'll give them a big lift. The party and the boys are on the go since 09, which is 13 seasons, like when you add it up, and it's a long, long time, and 
thought he probably won seven or eight county titles and got to December Munster Club finals in every year. So I think I I, I think I fancy Tip to get to the Munster final. Um, that side of the draw, I think they'll come through there, and any, anything can happen from there on, as you know. Like Munster final, if they lose, even they're still in it. So I think Tip will have a yeah. big say in the championship in two thousand and twenty-one. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, well said, lads. There's so much fighting. The Leinster draw is fascinating as well. With the, I know, like Wexford will have to beat Leash and the Dubs will have to beat Antrim, which could be a bit of recent history to that one, which I'm not proud of. But uh, uh, you could have an unbelievable Kilkenny Wexford semi final there in the often and as ever before, you know, I mean, possibly a Dublin Galway one as well. And um, look, it's great. I think there was a bit, uh, you're right, TJ. I think you said it from the get go, it was a bit for, every, for everybody in it. And, and we can yeah. really look forward to it. And again, lads, you know, Saturday week, I think, kicking off, I think, with, with Limerick and Tip and uh, with Cork and Waterford in the National League. So uh, it's great stuff. Great to look forward to. Fergal, we want to thank you most sincerely uh, for coming on with us and being absolutely brilliant. Cleared up a whole pile of stuff, I think, for our listeners as well, which is the huge thing. We, we might have picked some stuff up coming up to the championship, but I think our listeners will, will be delighted to get the you know, the refs thinking on it and, and you know, I think we asked the relevant questions as well that maybe the, the ordinary punter out there would be thinking. So thanks a minute, Fergal, and we hope you make the panel fairly sure you will. You're looking fit there anyway, only down the Zoom lens now is all I can say. But um, th- thanks so much for coming on with us and uh, lads, we'll talk to you all soon. The one last thing is, Macklanders, get your fantasy team in. Larry is going to have the code up, lads, for our listeners league. Um, so... Yeah, it's gathering great momentum now everywhere. I think we were kind of, we broke the mode. I mode, I think, with the fantasy hurling. There's loads of different crowds setting up many leagues now, like so. But, uh, Mark, is, 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 is this the fantasy? Is this for the championship now or for the league? Is it, Are we oh, getting a trial it? run in the league? Yeah, no, but it is It is in the league as well. Like, there's two fantasy hurlings for the year, so. All know, right, but, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I advise you going on last year's performance to enter the league one anyway. Yeah, TG, well, TG, TG, TG's pick will be easy. He'll be picking 15 numbers. Won't you, TG? He can't. He can only pick two. <laughs> no, see, can, I can only pick two. I can only pick two. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And then will um, be born. League on, le- <laughs> All right. Le- league, league only now though, is challenging because I think there's going to be a bit of uh, shadow boxing here. So, mm. you like you could pick a player here and he mightn't get a huge amount of game time because maybe John Kiley will know He's fine. He will be playing in the championship. I need to find out who's going to be playing if there's something wrong with him. So you're going to get a lot of that in a lot of counties, Mark. So when you're putting your thought process together, Mark, or your selectors together, just make sure to remember it is the league, right? And that you're aware of all the rules. Yeah, well, the well, same, I, I, well, same I, challenge would be there, TJ, to suss out who would like to win a league. <laughs> I just did. I, I, I think, I think Les, you're reading the, the league completely wrong. I think... Um, the fact there's no quarter final, semi final, and final this year, I think you'll see the best team out in all rounds. I think John Kiley will go go all guns out, Liam, Liam Sheedy, to win the league. If you win your four games or whatever, like your your league champions this year, unless you meet in the championship later on, like Clare and Limerick did last year, I don't see much shadow boxing. The championship is starting two weeks after that, TJ. You know, unless you know yeah. something, mm-hmm. maybe you know the inside um, line on is your club mate and all that. But I can see, I don't think John Kiley will hand over the league the league cup to hand it anyone. Is there no relegation this year? No. There is, there is the no relegation. Yeah, they do. Yeah, B- yeah, bottom is. two, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I'm not sure yeah. on that now because that's not. Um, I wouldn't know. There, I wouldn't. There yeah, I don't know anything about relegation. I wouldn't know that now. <laughs> yeah, no, there is There's the bottom two playoff. I think uh, at some stage of the year, it might even be later. And uh, mm. I think the promote the promotion game is actually going to be played before an All Ireland semi final or something. The league promotion, oh yeah, there's yeah. something about yeah. yeah. There's something happening yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So let's thanks a million. Uh, just to mention Butler Hurleys are coming in with the prizes again. Uh initially. I presume we'll have a few more people as well for the for the our fantasy league for the examiner listeners. Um so again, thanks to everybody for listening, lads. I hope you have a great week. Uh and thank Fergal again for, for joining us and putting us clear on a few things. No harm every so often. Cheers, lads. Thanks, boys. Thanks, 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 Thanks,
Our mission was to show that we're no longer 